How's it going lads? Things have gone a little tits up here since last time. Apparently the ducks in the park ain't as free as I'd first thought. But if today's game taught me anything, it's that time in a maximum security facility can be pretty comfy, if you're willing to accept the very real risk of being attacked by a flying man in a leather gimp mask. Today we're looking at Batman Arkham Asylum, so grab yourself some bat soup, and enjoy the closest thing to a spooky Halloween game I can play without shitting my pants. Batman Arkham Asylum is an action game, with a mix of combat and stealth elements. You play the titular Santa Claus of blunt force trauma himself, exploring the grounds of Arkham Asylum, and attempting to dangle as many people convicted of tax fraud from high places as possible. Arkham Asylum has a very unique fighting system, centered around building up combos through attacking and countering. These attacks can be chained across multiple enemies, with extra upgrade points awarded for varying attacks. Some enemy types require use of certain moves in order to damage, so there's actual strategy in the combat, and it manages to avoid the button mashing and carpal tunnel that games like this can suffer from. Combat flows nicely when dealing with standard enemies. Only when they introduce these big fuckers later in the game does this flow get disrupted. These guys suck. Fuck these guys. <laughs> While the combat is really polished, it's the stealth sections that really take Arkham Asylum to the next level. Certain parts of the game present you with rooms of armed enemies, and task you with clearing them out without becoming a pincushion, since apparently dressing like a bat, doesn't make you bulletproof. These sections offer varied ways of dealing with enemies, glide kicking, dangling from gargoyles, head trauma via flying concrete. Additionally, guard behavior will alter depending on many factors, such as noises they hear, or whether they have found the body of another enemy. It all works together really well, and is pretty damn fun. But then again, brain damage caused by concrete blocks is always fun. Let's see that again. This would be enough for most games, but Arkham Asylum goes all out, setting the standard for future titles about men in tights. Detective mode offers insight into your environment, such as the location of enemies, or interactable objects. However as the name suggests, detective mode is also used in a series of puzzles and challenges, with the Riddler riddles and trophies offering additional challenge for those more interested in Batman lore than I. These offer a lot of post-game content, since some collectibles can only be found with gadgets found later in the game, like the Bat Drildo. For a game that's 11 years old, the graphics are decent. The environment captures the darker Batman style perfectly, but manages to avoid having each environment feel too similar. This also carries over to the design of enemies and bosses. Each iconic character is designed in that they are instantly recognizable, but don't go full Batman and Robin and end up looking silly. The story is one aspect where the game falls down though. While an interesting premise, the plot kinda burns out over time, with the end feeling like a bit of a letdown compared to how strong the game starts. Overall, Batman Arkham Asylum is a great game. Its gameplay and presentation hold up impressively for a game released 11 years ago, and it's understandable that other superhero games are compared to this title. While the story does peter out by the end, it's still worth experiencing, whether you're a big fan of the character or not. Anyway I'm gonna go now. Later fuckers. Shit, 